نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری واہل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اہلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اعوذ باللہ ان اکون من الجاہلین اللہم الہمن رشتن و عز من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ الحمد للہ سم الحمد للہ By the blessings of Allah Almighty, once again in our lives, once again in our lives, we have been granted the chance to avail of the blessings of the month, Shaharun Azim, the great month, the exalted month, Shaharun Mubarakatun, the sacred month of Ramadan. In this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be showering His blessings and bounties, will be forgiving His bondsmen. In this sacred month, what will we gather? What will we gather from the choicest of bounties and blessings and from the forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this all depends on how much we work for it and how much we, we strive to gather all these. But you know, how much we're going to work for gathering all these showers of forgiveness and mercy. In turn, it depends on how much we know and we realize about the excellence of this month, about the auspiciousness of these days, about the virtues of Ramadan. So to start with, I shall be narrating a few traditions regarding the merits of Ramadan, which Prophet Sallallahu has informed us about. And this will be done with the purpose to help us all realize the importance and so that we can all work hard and we can all struggle so that we may not be deprived of any of the blessings and the bounties of Ramadan. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who narrates in the Rimzi and Ibn Majah and similar words have also been narrated in Bukhari and Muslim by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when the first night of the month of Ramadan comes the devils and the defiant jinns that is all the jinns who follow and obey the devil, and they are the disobedient jinns. All the devils and the defiant jinns are bound in chains. That is, they are all chained up. And all the gates of hell are closed. And none of them remains open. And all the gates of heaven are thrown open. And none of them remains closed. And the heavenly herald announces... O seeker of goodness and virtue, advance and do all. And O seeker of evil and sin, halt and do not come forward. And then Prophet Salaisan added, A large number of sinning bondsmen are released from hell at the command of Allah. And all this takes place on every night of Ramadan. 
سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to be one of the lucky ones who respond to the call of this announcer. Make us one of those who proceed in the, in the virtuous deeds and in the deeds of goodness and who halt and stop in form of all the evil deeds and in all the sins and all the disobediences and all the transgressions. Hazrat ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that he himself narrates that the messenger of Allah was superior to all the men in generosity and doing good to the people in general. But in the month of Ramadan, his virtues and his piousness knew no bounds. In Ramadan, Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him every night and Prophet sallallahu recited the Quran to him. During those days, Prophet sallallahu appeared to be faster than winds in generosity and in kindness and in good deeds. So this is how, this is how Observing the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are we are expected to respond to the to the announcement of the announcer. And what about people who are not going to respond to this announcement? Hazrat Qab bin Ujra Raziallahu Ta'ala and who narrates that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was stepping up and he ascended. And the first step he took, he said, Amin. And then he, on the second step, he again said, Amin. And then on the third step, he again said, Amin. The messenger said, asked that we did not see anybody pray. Then what were you saying Amin to? Prophet Salaam answered that Jibra'il alayhi salam came and he said, may the person suffer perdition who witnessed Ramzan and was not forgiven of his sins. That is, he, he was there in Ramzan and he found the month of Ramazan, but he did not work hard. He did not struggle. He did not strive to gather the blessings and the bounties and the forgivenesses and the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hazrat Jibra'il alayhi salam said that may he suffer from perdition. And then Prophet said, to this prayer did I say Amin. And then when I stepped on the second step, Hazrat Jibrail said, may the person suffer perdition when your name is recited before him. Whose name? Prophet Wasallam's name is recited before him and who does not send blessings upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then I answered Amin. When I climbed the third step, Jibra'il alayhi salam said, May the person suffer perdition when he finds both or either of his old parents and does not earn Jannah by serving them. And I stated, Amin. So this is, this is, this is the destructive result of the person who is not responding to the call. And who is not halting for the evil deeds and for the sins during Ramzan. And who is not trying to struggle to proceed for the virtues and for the righteous deeds in Ramzan. How, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward and how much will the person be re recompensed? Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the reward on every virtuous deed is increased from 10 to 700 times. And this is what is explained in Quran. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, referring to the Quran said, I repeat again, that reward to every virtuous deed is increased from 10 to 700 times. But the standing command of Allah about fasting is that the fast is an exception. It is a special gift of the bondsman for me and I shall reward him directly for it. 
The bondsman forgoes food and drink solely for my sake, and I shall therefore recompense him for the sacrifice according to my pleasure. There are two moments of special joy for the man who fasts. One is when he breaks the fast and then he experiences. And this joy is when he experiences in his worldly life. And the other joy will be when? The other joy will be in hereafter when he will be presented before Allah. I swear the bad smell which is coming out from the mouth of a person who is fasting is more pleasant, is more pleasant to Allah than the sweet smell of musk. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no doubt Shakiran Alima. He is the He is the Allah who is all acknowledging and who is all knowing. And then Prophet added, and fast is a shield. And when any one of you keeps fasts, he must not utter indecent words or engage in any noisy scene. And were anyone to quarrel with him and call him names, he should simply say, I am, I am fasting. Here in these words, Prophet has called that, the sh that fast is a shield. Now, fast is a shield from what? It is a shield and a protection in this world against the tempting things, the attractive things, and then against the assaults of the devil. And in hereafter, it will be a shield against the fire of hell. Then, Hazrat Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim, that Prophet said, There is a special gate of paradise which is known as Rayyan, and only those who observe fasting will be allowed to enter through it on the day of resurrection. On that day, it will be called out, it will be called out aloud. Where are the bondsmen who used to fast for the sake of Allah and endure the pangs of hunger and thirst? Such of the bondsmen will respond to the call and save them. No one will be permitted to enter in this gate. And when they will all have entered Jannah through this gate, it will be shut and then no one else will be allowed to enter from it. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Hazrat Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Nisai that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, approached by one of his companions and he asked that please command me to perform an act from which, with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the maximum of reward. That is, I will gain the maximum of rewards and profits in hereafter. What did Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say? Keep fasts. There is nothing like it. Then Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet said, Qal man sama Ramazana imanan wa ihtasaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambihi. Prophet said that a person who fasts in the month of Ramadan in a state of belief, in a state of faith, and in a condition that his heart is, is hoping that he will be rewarding. And he has a conviction, he has a deep conviction in his, in his soul that he will be rewarded for all that. So out of the intention of reward hereafter, a person who is going to fast in the month of Ramazan, all the previous sins will be forgiven. All the previous sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. And then Prophet added, وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَزَانٍ إِيمَانٌ وَإِحْتَسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَنْبِهِ Any person who stands for salah, who stands for salah. These are, these are what? These are the supererogatory salah, the salatul tasbih, uh, the taravi of Ramadan, who stands 
in Ramazan, in Salah, in a state of faith and belief, with intention of being rewarded hereafter, then even his all previous sins will be forgiven. And then last but not the least, Prophet Sallallahu finally added, وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانٌ وَإِخْتَصَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَنْبِهِ Whoever stands in prayers, in salah, in the nights of Laylatul Qadr, in a state of faith and belief, and expecting and hoping for reward with the intention of being rewarded in hereafter, then even all his sins will be forgiven. All the sins of his previous life will be forgiven. So the worships of Ramazan, the working of Ramazan, the striving and struggling and sacrificing of Ramadan is all what? It is a simple and it is like one of the easiest formulas for getting all of our previous lives sins being forgiven, being pardoned. Allahumma ghfir li zambi kullahu. Allahumma ghfir li zambi kullahu. Allahumma ghfir li zambi kullahu. Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimeen. So fasts, standing for the supererogatory salah, that is salatu tarawi, and then worshipping in the lights of Laylatul Qadr. These are all in a state of iman and ikhtisab are going to lead, lead to forgiveness of all of our sins in this sacred month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, guide us all, support us all, best us all with the best of health, best of condition and the best of helpers and supporters in our family that we may be able to struggle and strive to gather all these. Then Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that Prophet sallallahu narrated uh, said that the fast and Quran will both plead or intercede on the behalf of the bondsmen who fasted and who recited Quran. The fast will say, that is how will the fast intercede on the day of resurrection? The fast will say, my Lord, I held him back from food and drink and sexual satisfaction, except my intercession for him today. That is, treat him with mercy and forgiveness. And then the Quran will say, I had held him back from taking rest and sleeping in the night. O oh Allah, accept my intercession for him today. And the Quran will be interceding and pledging and pleading Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat him with mercy and forgiveness. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa added the intercession of both, that is the fast and Quran will be accepted for the bondsman and he will be treated mercifully and all his sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah, what a bumper offer we're going to be. We're going to be offered because of this Ramadan. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim Ahmad, in Tarindi, Abu Da'ud, and Ibn Majah. That Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever omits, whoever, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, for anybody for whom the fasting of Ramadan was obligatory, whoever omits a single fast of Ramadan without a legal concession of journey or illness, I'll be talking about that, without a legal concession, then no amendment can be made for this. No amendment can be made for the for the fast which was omitted, even though if the person observes fasting throughout the life. So there is no amendment. There is absolutely no kafara which has been suggested by Quran, by Hadith, that if a person knowingly, knowingly, without any reason, 
without any legal excuse or concession, just leaves a fast of Ramazan a day, then there will be no nothing or not even observing the fast for the whole of the month, which will be an amendment for this. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who has narrated that how we need to spend the night and how we need to spend the months. And Hazrat Anas also has related that Prophet sallallahu said that when Laylatul Qadr comes, Jibra'il descends in the company of angels and prays for mercy for the bondsmen who are engaged in worship and remembrance of Allah standing or sitting. So the angels will be asking for the forgiveness of those who are fasting, for those who are standing in salah, and for those who are who will be in the state of remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all remember all these and adopt what is instructed by hadith and sunnah. Now, narrating the words of a few traditions to highlight the excellence and the merits of Ramadan. Now, next, I would want to talk about a basic planner, a basic planner for the month of Ramadan. That is how are we going to plan our activities and the whole, the schedule for the whole of the day in the month of Ramadan. The day will obviously in Ramadan will start with the starting of the fast, that is with the pre-dawn meal, the seri. And Prophet Sallallahu has advised all the believers to eat and drink uh, in this pre-dawn meal or seri. As Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim and Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu said, the sahiru fa inna fi sahuri baraka that take your meal before dawn because there is blessing in it. There is blessing in it. So we should not all deprive ourselves from these blessings of Sari. And you know, like there is a routine of certain people that they stay up late till night and like uh, at midnight, they get a home delivery or they eat up something and then they just sleep through the time of Seri. No, this person is depriving herself or himself from all the blessings of this, this auspicious time. And so to start with, I will urge all of you and all of us to plan and to get up slightly earlier like half an hour earlier than the required time for the preparation and for the eating of all this meal so that we can all avail of this this best, best of the time in the day this most blessed time of the day because you know Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet said about this time that in the last one third of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord descends to the lowest heaven. Our Lord descends to the lowest heaven in the last one third of the night. And he says, who is calling upon me? I may answer him. Who is asking from me? I may bless him. Who is seeking my forgiveness? that I may forgive him. So let us plan. So let us plan that none of us is deprived of all of this. We are going, even if we cannot make it like half an hour, like at least 15 to 20 minutes of this quality time with our merciful Allah, with our forgiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know what? In the darkness of the night, in the darkness of the night, our solitude, the quietness, when we will be in a position of prostration and we will be crying 
and we will be begging and we will be praying and we will be seeking forgiveness from Almighty Allah, from the Al-Ghafur, Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghafar. He is, he is all forgiving. He will surely, he will surely forgive all of us and he will indeed forgive all of our sins. <coughs> so in these auspicious moments, all the people, all the people will be heard, will be answered and their prayers will be accepted. So we we need to plan not to waste the opportunity this Ramzan. We definitely, very, very, very carefully, we need to plan not to waste this opportunity in this Ramzan, surely. And now, as far as this meal of Sehri is concerned, there are no special or specific words for making intention which are proved by the manner or by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And however, regarding this meal, as Hazrat Abu Darda Razillahu Ta'ala and who has reported that there are three things from the manner of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are hasten the breaking of the fast and to delay the taking of the pre-dawn meal that is as close to as close to as the proclamation of the Salah of Fajr and to place the right hand over the left in Salah. So we need to eat our meal as close to the Azan as possible. And remember, remember that uh, the intention for the obligatory fast, although I'm, I've mentioned that no specific words are needed for making the intention, it is only a state of mind. And like when we are making arrangements for our fast of the next day or making arrangements for the meal of the fast for the next day, that actually implies that we have intention of fasting. So by word of my mouth, we do not have to say some specific words for intention. But in our hearts, we need to make the intention of the obligatory fast before dawn and where was the, the intention for the supererogatory fasts can be made till noon. And then we need to remember the promise of the Prophet ﷺ that he said that whenever a person is sitting and he is eating and drinking this meal before the dawn, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has orders and he appoints an angel who stands behind him and throughout he is busy consuming the meal the angel keeps on asking for his forgiveness and asking for him to be rewarded with the best of reward hereafter and for him asking for blessings so that is why we need not we need not, we need to be very careful not to avoid this pre-dawn meal and the sehri. Now, after we've taken our meal, we need to remember one thing else also, as has been reported in Hazrat, uh, by Hazrat Abu Huraira in Abu Dawud, the Prophet Sallallahu has guided us that when a person is eating his sehri, then, and he has a utensil like a glass or a plate in his hand from which he is eating, he should not put it down immediately when he hears the azan but he should he should satisfy his needs but that is only when we have not been extra lazy and we have intentionally delayed getting up if we had not been able to eat properly then we are allowed and it is permissible to keep on eating or drinking according to our necessity till the last words of the adhan but if we happen to have uh, completed our necessities and requirements, then we just not, uh, without any rhyme or reason, we just need not carry on sipping a cup of tea or anything like that. Now, after completing our meal, the next effort we're going to do is in the month of Ramadan, we might not be doing in the rest of the months is to make sure that our Salah of Fajr is definitely offered at the time of excellence 
that is as early as possible to the to the starting time because this is the time of excellence and the reward of the salah is maximum as when it is offered as close to the starting time and then after after offering our salatul fajr what are we going to do we are not going to go off to sleep <coughs> We are not going to go off to sleep. What are we going to do? We are going to recite the Quran. Why recite the Quran? Because it is an order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is it is a mandatory manner of the Prophet sallallahu as well. And what does the recitation of Quran in Fajr help us with? First thing is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Bani Israel verse 78, in the Quran al Fajri Kana Mashhuda, there is absolutely no doubt that the recitation of Quran at dawn or the recitation of Quran after the Salah of Fajr is indeed witnessed. And it is witnessed by whom? By the angels. So this is the first reason and the first advantage of the recitation of Quran after the Salah of Fajr. And the second thing is that at this time of the day we are totally free there is no noise there is no there is no commitments there is no distraction there is no disturbance we are totally empty minded and we will so very easily absorb and soak at this time of the day all the teachings and commandments and message of quran and then reciting quran at the start of the day will obviously bring a lot of blessings for the rest of the day and then, like you charge your mobiles at the start of the day, by reciting Quran at the start of the day, we will be charging the batteries of our faith and belief in the start of the day. And reciting Quran at the start of the day, we will be definitely receiving a very important message. And for the day, we will be, re we will be receiving the commandments and do's and don'ts to be conducted for the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us, helps us adopt all these manners of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> now after this, how are we going to spend the rest of the day while fasting? And what are going to be our activities and manners? The first and the most important thing we need to be important and caring about is what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. قُطِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامَ كَمَا قُطِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ Fasting in the month of Ramadan has been made obligatory for you like it was made obligatory for the people of the scriptures are people who were the followers of the previous prophets and the whole purpose was what la'allakum tattakun so that you may you may achieve piety you may become pious so the fast we are going to spend should be in a state of piety with the feeling of the fear of Allah in a state in a condition of piousness the fear of Allah during our fast should be predominating over all the other feelings. Not only we will be stopping from eating and drinking, but we will be in a state of total self-control because of this fear of Allah. And this is exactly what the purpose of fasting is. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Bukhari that Prophet has told us, warned us, all of us, that Allah has no need for him to leave. Allah has no need for him to leave his food or drink for who cannot leave evil or falsehood during fast. So fasting is actually self-discipline, self-control. And that is what fast is going to train all of us to. So 
Let not such conditions prevail during our fast. Let never, never during our fast, let such conditions prevail that our tongue and throat is all dry and parched. But despite being dried and being parched, the tongue is wagging and wagging and there is loose talk, mocking people, hurting people, belittling people, making fun of friends, backbiting, slandering. Then the stomach might be empty, feeling pangs of hunger, but the heart is all filled up. The heart is all bloated with arrogance, with envy, with sinful desires, with the desires of forbidden things, with hatred and enmity for the relations of kith and kin, or with the lust and love of the world and the worldly riches and wealths. No, we need to purify, we need to clean up our souls and hearts. Let not such conditions prevail that with our eyes we recite the Quran, we read the verses of Quran and with the same eyes during fast we are busy seeing movies and dramas and all sorts of forbidden stuff with our own ears we will be listening to the Quran, the recitations of the Quran, but with the same, with the very same ears, we spent our fast entertaining ourselves, listening to music and all sorts of musical stuff. No, no, we have to say no to all this because fasts are basically training us for being the pious believers. It is a training for piety. Ramzan is basically a refresher for the God-fearing. Fast and Ramazan train us for self-control. So we will be, inshallah, we will be, inshallah, in this Ramzan, we will be very vigilantly, very vigilantly and very sensitively controlling our tongues, our eyes, our ears, and we will be meticulously planning and working out to purify our souls, our hearts. As Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful, indeed, surely successful in the world and hereafter is the person who purifies his heart, who cleans his soul. And failure to be successful, failure to achieve the rewards and the bounties in your after is the person who just, who just suppresses all the evils in the soul and just lets them be like they are and carries on his evil and his sinful life in the pattern it was carrying on. And then what next? The first, these were the few don'ts I wanted to highlight in our routine of the fast. And now a few do's I would want to talk about. The first and the foremost and the most important thing which we are supposed to do is connect with Quran. Connect with Quran. Connection of Quran is the most important things to be very, very vigilantly carried out in Ramadan. Because you know, all the auspiciousness and all the excellence and all the merits of this month of Ramadan are basically because of Quran itself. It was Quran which was revealed in the month of Ramadan and prophethood was blessed to the Prophet So 
it was in this month that the Quran was revealed. That is why we rejoice this month of Ramadan by fasting and by making supererogatory worships. And that is why we rejoice because this was the month we were, we were blessed with this gift of the message of Allah, the book of Allah and the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is the relationship of Muslims with Quran which makes it so special. So this Ramadan, so this Ramadan, we are all going to make a resolution today to establish a strong connection with Quran, inshallah. Allah help us all, guide us all and protect us all. Even if in our previous years, in our previous lives, we stayed away from Quran, ignorant of the message of Quran. Now we are going to make our resolution. Now is the time we make our resolutions that we will work out to develop a strong bond with the book of Allah. And we're going to make a pledge with Allah, asking his help, asking and praying for his help and support and guidance. And we are inshallah going to make a resolution that we are going to develop a strong bond with the book of Allah, not only for this month only, but with perseverance and with steadfastness for the rest of our lives till the last breath. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi zidni ilma. Allahumma fakihna fi deen. A'uzu billahi an akuna min al jahileen. Allahumma inni as'aluka. علما نافيا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني ما ينفعني وزدني علما اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع من نفس لا تشبع من قلب لا يخشع من دعوة لا يستجاب له So how are we going to connect with Quran? We're going to recite Quran. As I mentioned, Quran al-Fajr. We are going to recite Quran. We are going to read and go through the translation of Quran. And we're going to try to understand the message of Quran. Understand the commandments, the do's and don'ts of Allah. We can join in. We can join in in any of the Quran sessions proceeding around us are being carried out online where we can get in depth we can get in depth the comprehensions to the order of Quran to the commandments of Allah make it a point make it a point and this is according to the manner of the Prophet ﷺ, according to the Sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, that at least once did he did he complete the Quran? This I I've already narrated the words of the Prophet Sallallahu that he used to meet Hazrat Jibrail Alayhi Salam. He used to come at the night and how much of Quran had been revealed till that year, till that Ramadan. Prophet Sallallahu used to recite it. And we learn from traditions that Prophet Sallallahu in his last year of life, he recited the Quran twice to Hazrat Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam. So we are going to complete at least one Quran by recitation. And inshallah, we're going to strive and struggle to complete the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu to complete Quran twice also. And one will be with our recitation at Fajr and other may be in our Dora Quran. We are going to inshallah join in or it may be as the Qiyamul Layl or in our Salatu Tarawi, which we are going to offer, inshallah, in the nights of Ramadan. The second thing, as I have already narrated to you the words of the mannerism of the Prophet ﷺ, that he used to, number one, he used to recite at least once the whole of the Holy Quran. And the second is that he was extraordinarily generous that his generosity was even more than the other months of the year. 
So the second sunnah and the manner of the Prophet Sallallahu which we are going to keep in our mind is to spend in the path of Allah. To spend as much of our money, of our wealth, of our time, of our energies in the path of Allah. Paying zakat is not mandatory. It is not obligatory specifically to be spent in the month of Ramadan. But people are generally desirous of getting a greater reward. As we learn from the words of Hadith that any, any virtue in the month of Ramadan will be rewarded a minimum of 70 times. So being desirous of getting a greater reward of their paying zakat, people generally tend to pay and manage the payment of zakat from one Ramadan to the other Ramadan because the calculation for zakat has to be made on the yearly basis. But in this month of Ramadan, according to the generous manner of the Prophet Sallallahu which no doubt is the role model for all of us, we need to spend something on top of and more than zakat, that is supererogatory charity in the path of Allah. As much and as easily we can afford, but we are all going to make some extra charity also in the path of Allah. Then after charity and after the contact with Quran, the third thing which we all need to very strictly be careful about is try to avoid getting, getting involved in extra worldly activities and try to focus on the remembrance of Allah. Do as much dhikr, do as much dhikr and remembrance of Allah as is possible. Because the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ, we all fast. We all fast in the month of Ramadan. Who among us will be rewarded as the greatest of rewards? Prophet ﷺ said, the one who will make the maximum of remembrance of Allah. Rabbi a'ini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. So, remembrance of Allah will be in the form of recitation of Quran, in the offering of Salah, in the offering of all the supererogatory Salah of Ramadan, and then in the form of the supplications of the morning and the evening is taught by Prophet Sallallahu and the supplications or the recitations after Salah as have been taught by the manner of the Prophet Sallallahu and then in all all our daily activities, the, the du'as and the words taught by the Prophet Sallallahu before sleeping, before, before we get up from bed, before going to the washroom or before leaving our house, entering our house or eating or drinking or whatever, or dressing up or taking off our clothes. So this will be, this will be a continuous form of remembrance. So from now, today, start getting into the habit of doing all that. So by the time we get or we enter into the month of Ramadan, we are very much into the habit and we're going to make all our family members also get into the habit of reciting all these inshallah in this month. And then other than that, we're going to keep our tongue supple with the remembrance of Allah. I shall be talking about the zikr in uh, the sessions of Surah An-Nisa inshallah ta'ala soon, but then mentioning here, other than all these forms of remembrance of Allah, throughout the fast, we will be, we will be busy doing all, all the duties of Allah and all the duties of as have been imposed on us for all the fellow beings, but our tongue will be supple, will be supple with the remembrance and praises of Allah. You may just keep on saying la ilaha illallah because this is the excellence. This is the most excellent of zikr. Then 
we may just keep on saying subhanallah subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim this is what this is this is the verse by which the angels praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i will be talking about the excellence of all of these inshallah in our in our sessions to come and then we may just keep on saying subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar these were the most loved loved words the four words the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved the most and then la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah these are the words which were gifted to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were from beneath the throne of allah azza wa jal and la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir so all these things we will be continuously reciting and our tongues will be supple with the names and with the praise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say again pray again rabbi a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik another thing which we are going to plan and work hard for is try to stay in a state of wudu so that when we are fasting we have a pure body and this will lead to a pure mind a pure soul a pure tongue a pure heart and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes what inna allah yuhibbu at-tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin so try to stay in a state of wudu and then we need to be extremely sensitive and conscious and mindful of all of our duties as a wife as a mother as a sister as a daughter as a friend as a neighbor as a mistress that is all the duties to all the fellow beings around us we have to be extremely conscious and sensitive and vigilant in all of these maybe i i would just urge you all to be sensitive about the fact that the state of affairs might not be that we might be proceeding towards all forms of supererogatory prayers but these obligatory duties are being ignored no no to this definitely in ramzan so that it becomes a source of training for the rest of the year as well and then make plenty of dua make plenty of dua as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions amidst all the verses where allah has given us orders of uh, of his commandments regarding the the proceedings of the month of ramadan he mentions there in surah al-baqarah he says idha ta'alaq ibadi anni fa inni kareeb ujibu da'wat ad-da'i iza ta'ani that oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when these bondsmen they inquire from you about me then tell them all inform them all what tell them that i am very close to them i am very near to all of them and i am not just near i do what i ujibu da'wat ad-da'i iza da'ani when any person who calls me who prays who says dua to me i listen i respond i answer and i accept allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that ask from me allah is rahim he likes when we pray and he is rahman he he dislikes and he is not pleased when we do not make dua so when when all of us we have been given this gift of dua and inna dua huwa al ibada allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has announced and declared in the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there is absolutely no no doubt that making dua making supplication itself is a worship and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has announced us laysa akramu that there is nothing more honorable and more respectful in the sight of allah other than dua then must must we all make dua and plenty of dua throughout throughout the day throughout the night 
from morn till night. And why must, why must not we all pray? Because, you know, all of us have some stresses, some anxieties, some worries, some miseries, some difficulties, some difficult situations in our lives. We want to, we want them all to pass off. And then, secondly, all of us, we have desires, we have wishes, we are longing for things. And then last but not the least, all of us, with the exception of any one of us, all of us, we have a huge bundle of sins. A huge, a huge bundle of major and minor sins which need to be forgiven. <coughs> which need to be forgiven. So that is why need, need to make plenty of supplications and plenty of dua in this month, which is the month of acceptance of supplications. And then in this month, when all the devils, with all the devils chained up, the devil which is whispering in our heart, when we offer Salah is chained up. So in this sacred month of Ramazan, try to improve the quality of Salah. We are going to concentrate. This is a resolution making. All of us, let's make this resolution. That we are going to concentrate and we are going to work at the concentration level of our Salah and the beauty of our Salah. And then after spending the whole of day in, in the state of fast, in all these activities, inshallah, then comes the time of the sunset where all of us will be, will be doing our sunset meal or our iftari and we will be breaking our fasts. And just as I narrated previously, that Prophet Sallallahu manner was that he never delayed the breaking of fast. And as far as uh, this breaking of the fast is concerned, this is the time. The time before the breaking of the fast, that is the time of the sunset. In the month of Ramadan, this is the time when prayers are answered. Number one, prayers are answered. And number two, this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases his bondsmen from the hellfire. So we need to plan, we need to very carefully plan and we need to get free from the preparation of the meal of this time. We need to get free a few minutes before the sunset and before the iftar. And getting free a few minutes, we're going to sit, we're going to sit quietly and focus and concentrate on dua because this is the time of acceptance of the prayers and this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to release some of his bondsmen from the hellfire. May we be one of those lucky ones. So we are going to pray for many things other which you want to pray but we are definitely all of us we're going to pray number one for forgiveness Forgiveness of all of our of all of our previous sins. Number two, release from hell. And number three, being rewarded with the entrance to Jannah. And little brief these supplications of Quran and the and the supplications taught by the Prophet. I will be here mentioning four of these. I just okay, fine, go ahead, but just the first is. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. And we will be saying these words a minimum of three times because the Prophet has promised us that any person who asks or prays for the release from hell, then hell itself pleads and intercedes for this person to be released from hell. 
So we're going to say at least a minimum of three times. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. And then ask for the bounties of Jannah. Rabbibni li'aindaka baytan fil jannah. And we are also going to say these, recite these words of Quran at least thrice. Because again, Prophet ﷺ has informed all of us in his words that whoever asks and prays for the reward of Jannah three times, then Jannah itself will intercede and plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person to be rewarded with the blessings and bounties of Jannah. So three times and then seeking forgiveness for the sins is a Quranic supplication. And then the words of the Prophet Allahumma inna ka afuvan karimun tuhibbul afma fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna. And I will request all of you and suggest all of you <coughs> and I will request and suggest all of you to recite these verses and words loudly so that all of our family members, all of our family members around us, our husbands, our children, all of them around us, they get to hear and they slowly and steadily will be reciting and then they will learn it by heart and then inshallah, after we have passed away, they will carry on the sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then there is, for the breaking of the fast, there is a supplication proven by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Insha'Allah, we shall be reciting these words to follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and being being desirous of being rewarded of following the sunnah as well. Now, breaking the fast as by the manner of the Prophet وسلم, was that he used to eat. To start with, he used to take a fresh date or a dry date if a fresh date was not available or if both were not available, he used to take he used to drink some water. Taking salt is not proven by the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu But what we learn from here is we are not going to fuss over the food we have been provided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and our family. By the courtesy of our mothers or our husbands or sisters, we are not going to fuss over the food. Be grateful for whatever we have been provided be with and try to be simple try to be simple and we need to realize at this time when we ourselves have experienced the hunger pangs throughout the fast at this time of the day and throughout the fast we need to realize the hunger of the hungry and the deprived and we need to remember and care the thirst of those who are deprived of clean, pure, cool water or drinks. <coughs> and, then, and then we all should also try to provide food and drinks to our fellow beings for breaking their fast because this will also be a source of reward as much as fasting itself. Now, what comes next is that after the fast has been completed and we have offered our Maghrib Salah, what do we do next? How are we going to plan the night now? Surely and not surely. We are not going to waste the time hoteling and dining out and shopping or winter shopping. No, nothing of the sort. We are not going to waste these auspicious hours and moments and days and nights in just extra worldly activities. What is necessary, what is a necessity should obviously be attended to, but unnecessary indulgement in the unimportant and forbidden and wasteful activities is obviously we're going to all say no to it. Remember the words of the Prophet we just 
narrated, Man qama ramadhanin imanun wa ihtasaban gufira lahu ma taqaddama min sambihi. These were the words of the Prophet wasallam reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari and Muslim. So not what are we going to do after this? Obviously, the supererogatory salah, the salah of Tarawi. Remember, it is not obligatory. It is not obligatory. It is supererogatory, but it is. It was a mandatory sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So if he who was promised as total forgiveness, if he who was the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not omit this, we should not omit this despite of the fact that it is not obligatory. The reward is great. Why are we not going to omit this salah? Number one, because it was the mandatory, mandatory sunnah and the manner of the Prophet wasallam. So we are not going to omit this. Number two, the reward is all the previous sins of the previous life. Whatever we saw, whatever we heard, whatever we talked, whatever we wore, all the disobediences, all the laziness, all the forgetfulness, all the transgressions, all the disobediences will be forgiven. So why waste this, this golden chance? And secondly, offering this salah will be a means by which we will be able to complete one Quran at least. And by this doing so, we will also be completing the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ of going through the recital of Quran at least once in Ramadan. And then obviously, inshallah, I will be talking about the nights of Laylatul Qadr and about Itaqaf as we will be proceeding because we're running short of time and I need to wind up the session. I will be talking about these two when we will be talking about uh, Eid al-Fitr and we will be talking about um, Sadqa Eid al-Fitr and about these these worthy nights and about the commandments and the manners of the Prophet ﷺ regarding it, the Kaab. We shall be talking about all that in our sessions of Ramadan, inshallah. But now, before I wind up, here I would want to highlight the few conditions in which omission, no, not omission, I highlight not the omission, but the postponement of fast is permissible. As Allah has mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That anyone of you who is sick or who is traveling should complete the count in days other than the month of Ramadan. So the exemption to fast in the days of Ramadan and to postpone the fast of Ramadan, the first condition is illness. And it is maridhan, it is any illness, no specification, no hard and fast conditions and rules. It is just between the person and Allah. If the person feels sick or thinks that he cannot, he cannot fast and he doesn't have the physical or the emotional stamina because of the illness that he cannot fast, then he can go ahead and he is legally permitted to omit this and then complete it at a later, in a later month. Our Allah suffering, any travel. Again, no specification and no hard and fast rules of travel. These two conditions have been permitted in Quran and then according to the words of Prophet a pregnant lady, a nursing mother and women obviously because they are not in a state of purity while their menstrual cycles or while they are having the, their postpartum bleeding those 30 or 40 days when they are bleeding after their delivery. So in these four conditions also, the women will not be fasting but all these are not omitted they are they are what they are to be postponed and they will be completed completing the count 
in months other than Ramadan is obligatory. It is an order of Allah. So we cannot, we cannot just leave them alone. They have to be completed after Ramadan and preferably, preferably before the next Ramadan comes and as early as we can. And they should be completed because it is an it is an obligation and it is an order of Quran. But the only exemption is a person who is sick and there are absolutely no chances of his recovery in near future. And he will not be able to fast after Ramadan even. So he is the sole person and this is the sole exemption for the person who can pay what? Fidya to ta'amu miskeen. That he can pay what? He can be asked. He is allowed and it is permitted that instead of a fast, he is permitted to feed a person two meals of a day in replacement of a single fast. It can be in form of cash, it can be in form of kind, it can be in form of a food and it can be to any person who is fasting or who is not even fasting. But if the food of uh, the pre-dawn uh, meal and if the food of the iftar is provided to a person who is fasting, then obviously the reward will be increased because the reward of helping and assisting in the fast will also be rewarded to the person who is assisting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all understand, comprehend and remember, wholeheartedly believe and adopt all what we have heard and learned today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this in this sacred month of Ramadan, help us all, guide us all, protect us all from the delusions of shaitan, from the whisperings of shaitan, and make us one of those all successful and lucky ones who work hard, who strive, who struggle in the worships, in the fasts, in their charities, in their remembrances, in their piety and in performing their duties to their fellow beings and being fearing of Allah. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da is khadaytana wa hablana millatunka rahma innaka anta wahab subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin now before we wind up I would want to invite all of you and uh, I would invite all of you and I would request you to invite all around you to the sessions we will be inshallah taking in the month of Ramazan inshallah with the help and with the guidance and with the support of Allah Azza wa Jal I will be starting from the first of Ramazan. From the first of Ramadan, we will be starting our sessions of in depth, the insight to the message of Surah Tun Nisa, a very important surah of the Quran out of the Sab'a Tawal, the seven lengthy surahs of Quran, Surah Tun Nisa, a very important ornament for all the Muslim women of Islam. It has to be. It has to be made. So I shall be in 27 sessions, starting from the 1st of Ramadan till the 27th of Ramadan. I shall be, I shall be conducting sessions, inshallah ta'ala, with the help and support of Allah Azza wa Jal. Daily session will be like one to one and a quarter of an hour. And the timings of the sessions will be 
generally i think from will be from between 3 to 4 pm or 3 to quarter past 4 pm inshallah and it will be broadcasted daily on our facebook on our instagram and on our youtube channel so i will request all of you sisters inviting your sisters and cousins your mothers convincing their teenagers daughters all the young folk and all the youth who cannot join us in our live sessions of the morning or who cannot join us in the broadcast sessions of the mornings because of their schools and colleges or universities going on or there are other other few of my sisters and daughters who cannot just understand and comprehend our urdu lecture sessions so i have specially designed all these sessions in english just and merely to be able to address and to be able to pass on the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who cannot comprehend the message in urdu fi amanillah inshallah see you all and praying that all of you join us on the first of ramazan fi amanillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh